Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Speak Life Center. Hallelujah. Where your life is going to change. Amen. Hallelujah. We have some distinguished visitors in the house today. Yes, we do. We have uh, Mr. Rodney Brewer and Becky Brewer. Can we give them a hallelujah? Yes. Yes. They are so welcome. We are glad that they are here today. We want to make them feel at home. Uh, I have uh, seven words I want to say. And it says, uh, what is the motivation of your heart? What is the motivation of your heart? Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I, have, I also have a scripture that I want to share. Seven words. It's in John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Seven words. I am so thankful for those, those seven words because it tests me. You know, it makes me really, really think because uh, what is the motivation of my heart? I think about it sometimes. I said because, you know, you know, we can spend hours watching TikTok. We can spend hours looking at YouTube. We can spend hours on Facebook. We can spend hours working on classic cards, you know, standing at the stove, cooking, cooking, cleaning the house, watching the game, dancing all night long, reading romance novels, playing video games, disobeying God. We can spend hours just doing whatever we want to do. But he said in his word, if you love me, keep my commandments. What is the commandments? You know, that's simple. Jesus said, follow me, trust me, obey me, believe me, listen to me, read about me, just learn, uh, worship me, feel me, you know, my love for you. Uh, uh, see me, imagine me, picture me, taste me, perceive me, respect me, fear me, love me, understand me, take me serious, try me, acknowledge me, hold on to me. Don't let go. Focus on me. Look at me. Keep your eyes on me. Share me. Be a witness. Study me. Can we make him our Lord today? Can we make him our Lord today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for being the king of our hearts. You are the motivation of our heart today. We thank you for allowing us to be here today to breathe. We thank you that you just given us breath to, to just worship you. Father God, we thank you for the gifts and talents that's here in the Speak Life Center today. We thank you for each and every individual that's sitting in the seat today. We speak life into them today. We speak life through our praise and worship team. Life through every word that's going to come through our speaker today. Life through the, the uh, ushers at the door. Life through every aspect of this ministry. We speak life in here today. Lord, we thank you for how you're going to move mightily in this place. We thank you for um, Miss Becky Brewer and for Rodney Brewer, Father God. We thank you for allowing them to come into this place today, Father God. Speak to their heart today, Father God. Do something in there, Lord, that's going to cause them to see a more clear picture of who you are and why you came. Lord, we thank you. Have your way in this service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just stand on your feet today and greet one another. Hallelujah.
and be around his people. A lot of things in this world won't last. But when you look around the room, I'm hoping every one of these people will be with us in eternity. So if you have trouble with one of them, get used to it. There's no escaping them. <laughs> it's for all time and eternity. It's good to be in God's house. It's time for prayer for the children. So children, come on down and memory verses. Truth is, we play, pray for them, but they bless us as they bring the scriptures forward, aren't, don't they? Let's give them a hand. Eventually, we'll need more stage. You got one today, Rocco? Yeah, okay. You want to go before your brother? Okay. Genesis 6, 16. What the? I don't want to. You are the girl who sees. Colossians three sixteen. The word of Christ. Well, in you richly. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your wish to God. 
And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Psalm 105, verse 4. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. John 15, verse 13. Greater is no one than this, to give one's life for one's friends. John 15, verse 13. Romans 6, verse 23. For, wa for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal in Christ Jesus our Lord. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marcelina, and I'm here to share with you today Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for a man reaps what he sows. Galatians 6, 7. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Landon, and today I'm going to share with you today Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways... Acknowledge him, and God will make your path straight. Thank you. Psalm 95, verse 3. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Psalm 95, verse 3. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. I remember when I was in, I think, ninth grade, I had to do my first verbal book report. It scared me to death. So these kids are brave and doing a great job. Let's, let's stand up and... Uh, put our arms out as a symbol of our faith over them. Faith, it says if we have a mustard seed, we can move a mountain. So if all together we can muster at least one mustard seed, we can move mountains of problems out of these kids' lives. So let's use our mustard seeds to God's glory. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these young people. They're champions for your kingdom, Lord. Your hand is upon them. You keep them straight. You keep them where they need to be. You build up a hedge about them, oh God, and you protect them. It says in your word that your name is a strong and mighty tower and the righteous run into it and they are saved, Lord. We trust in your word, Lord, and we do not lean to our own understanding because, Lord, you are the one we can trust in. We thank you for being with them, keeping them safe up to date and the safety that you're putting on their future in Jesus' holy name. And the church say, amen, amen. God bless. And we're going to worship the Lord with our giving. Hi, right, good morning, family. All right. So, ushers, please come forward. Again, part of our service where we give back a portion of what the Lord has given us. Is it interesting how the children, too, study the, the verses in regards to, you know, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. We really, do we honestly trust him? That's the big question. Gentlemen, Heavenly Father, as the ushers are here ready to come forward, please let there be a blessing upon each and every person that gives, and may they give with a joyful heart. And let this, your church, use it to further your kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. So we think about it. Do we trust the Lord with all our hearts? You know, trust him enough to deal with, as we can see, the fear that can come upon children when they want to share, and, and especially when it comes to memory verses. But we think about it, you know, we gathered yesterday, and I just want to say thank you for everyone that did attend our discipleship class yesterday. And one of the things that was shared was a little bit part of fear when you think about it. JV, when he shared about how he wanted to share with others, you know, giving out tracts, but what's the right question to ask? How do you actually initiate that conversation? There's fear there, but a prayer was answered when Tina came on board 
and actually was able to put forward the evangelism class. And not only does he have the right question to ask, but he also knows how to compensate for any of the rejections. But see, those are the tools. Again, not trusting on ourselves, but trusting in God to give us what we need from the body, which is the most important thing. But we still have fear. We still want to share our faith with others. You know, it all comes down to asking the right question. Jesus shows it in the book of Mark and Luke when he went to Bartimaeus, the blind man, and asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He asked him that one question. He goes to the paralyzed man at the pool at Bethsaida in the book of John and asks him, what can I do for you? Or do you want to get well is what, he's at, what he asked him. So these are questions that were asked. They answered accordingly, and they were healed. They were transformed. But the right question or the question was asked. We can have fear when it comes time to want to come to somebody and share our faith. We all want to share our faith, do we not, with others, especially with the lost. But the problem we fa fa you know, face is fear. Do we ask the right question? Do we get rejection? Do they feel like I'm being judgmental? And above all, rejection. Those are the things we fear more than anything else. But do we ask the right question? We look at Anna, or Anne, who went to her oral surgeon, and he had to discuss with her about the upcoming surgery. So at the end of the discussion, he then turns around and asks her, do you have any questions for me? Anne turns around and asks him, did you go to church last Sunday? That wasn't anything to do with upcoming surgery. And, you know, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. But it sparked a conversation. And her question wasn't to, you know, put judgment on him, but it was an opportunity for her to share her faith with him. In the end, they discussed it, and he realized after their conversation, it was an opportunity for him to rekindle his relationship because whatever happened when he was young, he turned away from the Lord and from the church. And how many people do we know that are out there who are lost, who whatever for whatever reason have rejected the Lord and rejected the church because of what has happened in their past? But now they use that as a crutch not to move forward in their lives, not to develop that relationship. But it's like when Mark, what he shared with us yesterday, Brother Mark, he shared that he spoke to a young lady at his job. She needed a Bible. He had the right Bible for her. And he gave it to her. And in the end, all she could do was receive it with tears in her eyes. You know? So when Anne went back to the oral surgeon, not only did she give him a Bible, but in that Bible was his name was inscribed on it. And as she gave it to him, he received it with tears in his eyes. You see, the right question was asked. Can we do the same? Can we have and can we overcome that obstacle? And the one thing we learned in yesterday's class, if you're committed to Jesus, he will commit to you. And he will give you the answers and the right question to ask. So don't let fear overcome you, but overcome fear with your trust and love in Jesus. Gentlemen. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we're able to give back a portion of what you've given us to give back to you, knowing that this church will do the right thing with what you've given us and spread it throughout all the, the different churches that we can help. Heavenly Father, we just want to say let there be a fresh anointing upon our children as they continue to study your word and also put a blessing upon the parents as they take the time to study with their children. Let your blessing and let your fresh anointing fall upon your praise and worship team, as they bring us in one accord, in one voice, in one joyous chorus, in singing praises to you. And set a guard and watch over the door of the mouth of the pastor, John, as he comes to deliver the message this very day. But Lord God, let us overcome fear with your love. Let us not trust on our own understandings, but trust in you, because you can lead us in truth and guide us, and, put, and your word will always be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, but the trust has to be in you above all things.
forgive us the courage, but knowing, above all, if we commit to you, you will commit to us, and we can move forward in sharing your love to others. There is no better love, and there is no greater love than you, that you've given to us. Let us freely give it to others. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Had a few announcements to make before we get started. Our praise and worship team is ready. Hallelujah. They are ready. I got to get out of the way because I'm ready to worship our king. Anybody want to worship me with me? Okay, okay. Uh, I have a few announcements that's not in your uh, bulletin there, and I just want to share them with you guys. Um, prayer, Saturday, 9 a.m. right here. So, uh, Come in here. Come on here and get this prayer. It's it's powerful, 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 powerful environment when we come together and pray and lift up the name of Jesus and uh, intercede for people that don't pray. And so we we have a good time in here on Saturday, 9 a.m. right here. So uh, if you can make it, come join us. Uh, we have a disciple class uh, next Saturday. Uh, matter of fact, it's yes at the 30th at 12 p.m., and I missed yesterday. And that storm did a, did a thing to us. Our power was going in and out, in and out, but uh, we're going to make the next one. So there's a disciple class again next Saturday, 9.30, you know, uh, September 30th here. Uh, also, we have uh, here, um, it's going to be held in the fellowship hall. Julio, Mark, and, and uh, Yvonne's going to be leading that. By, it's a series by Tony Evans. Our right, Thursday night Bible studies is going to be starting back every, um, starts the 12th from 7 to 8. It's going to be on the second and fourth Thursday. Second and fourth Thursday. Thursday night Bible study. So um, make that hour. You guys will be blessed if you come here for that one hour on a Thursday. So, you know, then go get something to eat after that one hour. Find something to do. But Thursday, 7 to 8. Also, there's a men's breakfast Saturday morning, November the 4th at 9 a.m. Where the men at? Hallelujah. All right. Men's breakfast. I'm going to say that again. Men's breakfast. Yes. Uh, Saturday morning, November 4th, 9 a.m. So come with your appetite. All right, uh, we have here uh, Youth Sunday. October 29th is uh, our Youth Sunday. And it's going to be rehearsal every Saturday from 1 to 4. And we know that uh, can be a little pinch on the mom and dads out there. But from 1 to 4, uh, it's going to be a bless. Our children are anointed here. Amen. Where are the, where the kids at? Yes. So uh, you will be blessed. We got some good, good teachers in here uh, working with our youth. So uh, you will be blessed. There's also, it says here, a, a Christmas cantata for the youth and rehearsal uh, service um, after service today. Also for us, uh, teen Sunday school teachers, there's a meeting with Sister Becky and Brother Dave after service today in the uh, Sunday school room back there. So um, that's going to be after service as well. Uh, we have here ushers, see uh, Brother Julio for the uh, October scheduling so we can get our names on there so we can keep our edifice flowing nice and smoothly. So uh, we definitely want to show up th to there so we can keep things running nice and in order. Um, that's it with the announcements. I also, I just want to also um, welcome our those streaming online. I failed to mention that. So I don't want you guys to be left out. Hallelujah. So you are welcome. Hallelujah. So let's stand on your feet as we begin to worship. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. <laughs>
Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Jesus till every dark addiction stops to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus sing your name your name is power your name
worship you this morning. Lift your praise up to Jesus this morning. every barrier to crush down and tremble, every heart to tremble at the feet of Jesus this morning.
Things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. The things that we
word from the Lord, so I'm going to give her the mic. As we were worshiping this morning, I just heard God said, my people who are called by my name, I'm calling you into a deeper level of worship before me, says God. But many of you have resisted my voice, says God. But I'm calling you into a deeper level, a deeper level, and I need your heart. I need your surrender, says God. There are many things that you have not trusted me in, says God. But my heart pleads to you to lay your burdens before me, says God, for I am your God and I love you. And God is requiring us to cast our cares and our burdens before him. But he is calling us into a deeper, a deeper, a deeper, a deeper, a deeper level of worship before him. Yes, yes, and he says, surrender, give me your all, says God. Yeah, But I have heard your heart, and many of you have cried out to me. And many of you have said, I want more, I want more. But God says, give it to me. Give it to me, those things that you idol, those things that you hold on to so dearly. Lay it before me, says God. Lay it before me. Lay it before me. Yes, I will not accept less, says God. Yes, I say more, 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 more. Yeah, God. What should I do? I say, hear my voice and hearken to my voice this day, says God. For many of you are crying, many of you are weeping. And I care for you, says God. But hearken unto my voice and do not miss my move in this day and this hour, says the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Andrea. I appreciate it. God bless you. And without any further ado, David's going to bring you the word. Well, we're in the presence of the Most High. We have been. This is uh, a great accent to it all. And um, it's always a privilege and an honor to speak on his behalf, you know, as Sister Andrea just did. It takes a lot of courage to come up and to speak on the Lord's behalf. And uh, thank you for obedience to that. Thank you for the praise and worship team and the AV team for their excellent work um, in the ministry of music to you as you have figured out by now they understand that it's not a four song set just to be played to fill a slot in a program but it's about worshiping the lord it's about bringing in his presence here so that we can all worship together in one mind one spirit so that hopefully there's a a little extra splash of anointing on the message and somebody like sister andrea with this gift would yield to what the lord has Put on her heart. So let's move into the message today. We'll open with a quick prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your blessing in this house today. We thank you for having ministered to us through song and through worship, Lord, and through your word today, prophetically, Lord. We just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We seek none of it for ourselves. We truly want your will done here, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven, Lord, that we would follow your lead all the way. Take your hand, God kneel before you and call you king. Have your way in this place, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to open uh, in the book of Acts. Um, this is the last chapter. We're going to start in chapter 28. This is, uh, Paul has just become shipwrecked. So I just want to set this up a little bit. Um, he has uh, appealed to speak with Caesar. Um, so he's on his way to Rome. Um, there's a lot of in between on that. You'd have to read the previous chapters, but let's just leave it to say that there was a tempest, the ship that he and the other prisoners were on shipwrecked, and they had to swim the shore. If they could swim, they had to jump on parts of the boat uh, to make it, but nobody uh, passed in this thing. So we're going to take it here uh, in Acts 28, 2 and through 5. 
And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, every one, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said amongst themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live, or the God of vengeance is going to make it right by killing Paul. And the Bible says here in verse 5 that Paul shook off the beast into the fire, and he felt no harm. What I'd like to message, title this message today is shake off the beast, resisting the critical spirit. Now, this is not a fun message to put together. <laughs> I like the ones that are more encouraging. This is sort of on the lines of an admonition, uh, maybe an alarm to ourselves of reflection and remembrance of where God has brought us from. But my prayer is that our eyes become open to this, And as I address throughout this thing, I, this has been a big part of my behavior as well. So I am speaking to myself, or the Lord is speaking to me through me um, in this category. So shake off the beast, resisting the critical spirit. So we're going to talk about a couple of cousins here. They're called hypercritical hypocritical, and judgmental. Um, and then near the end uh, of the message, we're going to discuss eight ways to resist the critical spirit. And we're going to really support that with Scripture and the Word of God. So I have a lot of Scripture to read today, so just please bear with me. Let your hearts receive what's going to be said let the Lord deal with you as individuals, and God will deal with us as a people uh, with regard to this subject. So what I just want to open and say that when we are hypocritical, and that is really speaking about us speaking about our brothers and our sisters, we become hypocritical. And we're going to cover that a little bit later in the message. The reason I wanted to bring Paul into this, and I want to just mention from the, in the book of Acts from, from chapter 20 all the way through 28, this is what has come upon Paul, and you'll see him write about this in his epistles um, in the New Testament. But Paul was kidnapped, beaten, threatened, arrested, accused in lawsuits, interrogated, ridiculed ignored, shipwrecked, and bitten by a viper. That's in the eight chapters, um, the last eight chapters. If there's an individual that may have had some justification to be a complainer about things or someone, we might say that Paul could do that. He said this in Acts chapter 20 and verse 23. Paul said, I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. So he's been told by the Holy Spirit as he goes throughout, hey, my son, these are the things that you get to look forward to serving me. And what does Paul do? Does he run and hide? Does he retreat? Nope. He presses on bearing his cross, as it were. Amen. Praise God. So we find Paul here getting a bundle of sticks, coming up to a fire to warm himself, uh, to get to a place of comfort. It's cold and it's rainy. And isn't it like Satan to be hiding and lurking in the dark, cuddling up to our fire, catching us off guard and lunging out and putting his fangs 
into us in an attempt to infect us and inject us with his venom of spite, of hate, of being hypercritical. The barbarians, in this case, interesting enough, they passed judgment on Paul, um, saying that, hey, this guy, you know, he must be a murderer because he's, he's got a viper. They were waiting for him to fall over and die. So probably from their experience on that island, obviously these types of snakes existed, and they'd probably seen death come upon people that had been bitten by them, and perhaps some of those people were, in fact, not living right. So they equated it with some type of God of vengeance taking the life of somebody. So they, though the story isn't about the barbarians, you can see where even then and of themselves, seeing something happen to somebody that they witnessed, they already had passed judgment upon him and were criticizing him as being a murderer. Paul shakes off the beast, and this is the message here forward, so should we. We should also do the same thing. We should also recognize this. Since this message, really, the Lord put this upon my heart a couple of weeks ago, and it, it really came by uh, a way of something that was shared from one of the praise and worship members, and, and uh, I watched it through, or rather listened to it through, and it was speaking to my heart, but I set it aside and thought, wow, that's, you know, so, so true on behavior uh, for Christians. Um, and then a few days later, I was listening into it again. And I just felt the click right in my spirit that this is the message for this uh, particular week. So Satan wants to inject us and infect us, as I said before, with his vile venom and make us a backbiting, hypocritical, I'm sorry, hypercritical and hypocritical saint of God. Why? Why does he want to do that? Because, he's, because that or this in that is tearing one another down. He wants to take us out of our game. He wants to take us away from operating in our gifts that the Lord has blessed us with. So rather than using our gift to edify our brother and sister, we begin to crucify them, as it were, with our words and judgments. So we could step back and maybe have a moment of reflection to say, what is the viper that has latched on to me. And I'm not saying own it. I'm just saying as things come up, as your mind starts to process things and maybe you become judgmental or critical, try to recognize what that spirit is. And um, it could be possibly the company that we keep, who we socialize, socialize with, who we interact with. And I will tell you, it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that's outside of the church. It's not walking with God. It could be hanging around a brother or sister that's negative and always speaking negative things about the body. It doesn't belong in the body. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 15.33, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That's the King James Version. In the NIV, it says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Watch the company that we keep. When we criticize our brother and our sister, we criticize Jesus. We criticize the God we serve. In Matthew 25, Jesus is telling them, um, When I was in prison and you visited me, when I was hungry, you fed me, thirsty, you gave me drink. I was naked and you clothed me. And his disciples said, well, when did we do that? And he said, as much as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So whether it's a good deed or a bad deed through or to your brother and sister, you're criticizing your Lord and Savior. And I'm going to explain that a little bit deeper here in a moment, but I want to use scripture to kind of let you see this. So let's go to Luke chapter 7. This is a little bit lengthy, but I'm going to try to move through this at a, at a good pace here for you. Luke 7, 36 and 47, when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. 
No, there wasn't a set of lazy boys around the table and they pulled the lever back. It wasn't like that. Um, A woman in town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there uh, with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, here we go. He's already made up his mind about the woman, and he's going to project that onto Jesus. If this man were a prophet, if he was a prophet, if this guy was so much a prophet that he's been walking around being, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. So he not only passes judgment upon the woman, who probably this type of sin might have been open and people might have been aware of her, but he's passing judgment on Jesus in his mind, questioning that he's a prophet. So this is a word of caution on that. So when we do that and you catch yourself doing that, think about it. Am I projecting this onto Jesus as well? Nine times out of 10, the answer is going to be yes. Jesus answered him, said, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. And Jesus said, two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave both of them, both the debts. Now, which one of the two would love the money lender more? I'm adding some words here. Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. And Jesus said, bingo, you have judged correctly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? (laughs) Bear with me, I don't know that scripture by heart. (laughs) I just (laughs) fell off the track here. Um, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, and these are three things I want to focus on, the same statement, the first one, but again, I'm going to repeat it. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whosoever has been forgiven little, loves little. She did this, but you did not. She did this, but you did not. So how dare he speak these things or think them, right? Because Jesus knows what we're thinking. So we're not getting away with anything. You think it's tucked away somewhere in the deepest crevice of your heart. There is so much light shining on that thought and that sin. You can't hide it. Of course, your brothers and sisters may not be able to see it, but Jesus can. Praise God. So let's move forward a little bit and talk about a couple of things on there are actually eight things, and you know what? Please don't criticize me for this, but I forgot to list them for you, but I will state them uh, in here. Um, but how do we resist a critical spirit, right? That's what we want to, this is the message today. We want to be able to get out of this thing that sometimes gets a hold of us, and we, it doesn't matter if it's on Facebook, it doesn't matter if we're talking with somebody else about somebody else, and sometimes we think that we're just discussing the person's issue But at the end of the day, we have to be careful that we're not actually being critical of them. Now, I understand criticism kind of works both ways, right? There's food critics, and what do they do? They're called into the restaurant. So you put your favorite dish out there as the chef. And when they critique it, they may say great things about it. So that's criticism, but it's just positive. They may say negative things about that food, which because it's terrible, but it's negative. So we sort of have adopted that criticism. We say, oh, he criticized me. What we mean is they put me down. They said something bad about me. 
but really, Julio can tell me how great I look, and he's criticizing me, and thank you, Brother Julio, so do you. Praise God. <laughs> um, so our default scripture for this, we've, we've, we've preached it from this pulpit time and time again. Pastor John has preached it from this pulpit time and time, is James 4, 6, and 7. This is our default go-to, um, and this is James. He quotes from Proverbs 3, uh, 34, and then we're in James 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. He says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. This is our starting point right there. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil. Anybody want to finish this one? He'll flee from you, right? So it's a submission, a resistance, and he's out of there. Shake off the beast. Shake it off when you recognize it. Okay, so the first thing we want to be able to do, we're going to talk about eight things here. This one will take the most time, and then it'll kind of speed up as we go down the list. We want to be aware, and we want to consider and I noted it here, of our two-by-four. So some of you are nodding your heads. You probably know where I'm going. Um, but let's read this. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Pastor John actually touched on this last Sunday too. Judge not that ye be not judged. But what, with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Or again, it's going to be measured, except this time back on you. And why behold you the mote or the speck that is in your brother's eye, but you don't consider the beam or the two-by-four that's in your own eye? Or how will you say to your brother, let me pull out the mote or the speck out of your eye, and behold, a two-by-four is in your own eye? And these are Jesus' words, not mine. You hypocrite. First, cast out the beam out of your own eye. And then you shall so clearly to cast out the speck of your brother's eye. If we can rid our beam, then when we see the speck in our brother or our sister in their eye, we don't necessarily and probably don't come at a place of criticism. We come at a place of ministry. What their need is, we see it there, but we've recognized getting this. Now, a little object lesson for everybody. Everybody knows who Pinocchio is, right? Or has heard of Pinocchio. So Pinocchio, he, uh, every time the guy lied, what his, new, his nose would grow longer and longer. What if our two by four in our eye grew longer and longer every time we criticized a brother or sister? And we could see it, okay? Just get that image in your head. Everybody knows that a two-by-four, it's a piece of wood. It's four inches wide, two inches deep. Well, I guess if you turn it the other way, it's a four-by-two. Have it your way. Uh, pretend it's Burger King. So anyway, so what if that beam grew, right? Think about it for a second. So can anybody see this that I have between my thumb and my finger? <laughs> okay, I set myself up for that one. Well, if I put this in my eye, apparently, according to the scriptures, everybody can see it. But the point being, yes, it's minuscule. It really can't be identified. But this is our two by four today. But, uh, well, let me level with you. It's really not. It's a. Uh... See what I did with that there? Okay. So. If I have this thing here, right, how in the world can I, how can I even begin to, to look at the speck that's in my brother or sister's eye to make any type of criticism? Now, if I'm totally honest with you, since I have been born again, I would imagine that if I could see my two by four, that it would go through those doors in the back, that it would go out the double doors in the back, it would somehow go through Hartley and end up in Maryland, if I'm honest, right? This is the truth. I mean, there'd be enough lumber there to build 10 houses and a new development or something. It's, it's, it's our makeup. It's who we are. But here's our opportunity to recognize that. Let the scriptures and the word today speak to you so you can, can just 
reflect on this and shake off the beast because he's, he's hanging around you. He's waiting for you, trying to get comfortable, and he's going to latch on to you, and he's going to sink the venom in there, but you have an opportunity to shake it off before that takes place, and this is what the Lord wants us to be reminded of today. So, now that we've level set the message, I'll put this out of the way. Thank you for your chuckles. I appreciate it. Let's read Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. This is from the Lord's Prayer. I'm just reading this last verse. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Pretty simple there. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses. And these first two words after this comma are pretty powerful. Neither will. Neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. I mean, that's a pretty powerful thing. So we're to treat others better than ourselves, better than we deserve, better than they treat us. Hasn't God done the same for you and I? Hasn't he treated us? He looks down on us. He knows we're lowly. And yet he went to the cross regardless for you and I, knowing our faults, knowing our trespasses. So treat your brother and sister better um, than they deserve. And that doesn't mean you should expect it back. It would be great. But, you know, you lend, not expecting anything in return. Same here. You give kindness. If it comes back to you, praise God. If it doesn't, don't criticize them. Something might be going on. He may not be done with them yet. They may be at a point in their life where they're still in progress. You know, uh, we talked last week about clicking an action button and, you know, placing an order out there for something. Um, And, you know, the little thing spins and you're waiting. You're just waiting and waiting and waiting. But finally it happens and... It'll say pending or it'll say in progress or, you know, when you go back to follow up on it. So the Lord, too, might be working on the brother or the sister. Don't compare where they're at (laughs) with where you are. I've done this. (laughs) I've done this. And be critical of, yeah, well, maybe they're not praying enough or maybe they're not seeking the word enough. You know what? I had a period in my life. Where while I loved God, I certainly wasn't walking in obedience, and anybody in here could have criticized me for that. But guess what? God wasn't done with me. God was working on me. At some point in your life, while you're doing the criticizing, you've been there. God was working on you. God was bringing you out. Remember, the Bible says, don't compare ourselves amongst ourselves. It says it's not wise. You may be here. Your brother may be here. But as you look at, you try to look at that and justify that, that they haven't done this, that, or that, there's somebody up here who's walking a whole different level and might look upon you, God forbid, that you're not where they're at. So it's easy to criticize. Number two, remember where we came from. Don't lose sight of how much remaining, and I hate to even say this, but don't lose sight of how much remaining corruption can still be in us. We're not done messing up yet. Until Jesus comes, we're going to make mistakes. Until Jesus comes, we're going to trip. Right? And if we make dumb mistakes, that's okay. We can repent of those things. We can go before the Lord. But let's always keep our spirit in check and watch out for the viper trying to grab onto our hand. Revelations 2.5. Again, remember where we came from. This is an address to the church of Ephesus. Consider or remember how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, it will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Brothers and sisters, shake off the beast. Shake off the beast. Number three, 
Give thanks always and for everything. Paul said this in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us, concerning you, concerning his body. Hallelujah. Satan isn't going to take the time to hang around, and we kind of said this about James chapter 4. When you're busy <laughs> giving thanks for everything he's done for you, when you occupy your mind with thanksgiving unto the Lord, you just don't have the space and time between your ears to be thinking about something your brother did or didn't do or how they may have offended you because of something they did or didn't do. Be thankful. It'll change what goes on and shake off the beast. Number four, meditate on what love is. This is, a, I love this one. Paul said again in 1 Corinthians 13, and you guys are all familiar with this. But let's read it and just let it sink into you. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. Ha! <laughs> always trusts. Always hopes. Always perseveres. Love never fails. Try wearing that for a couple of days. The enemy will stay far away from you, I promise you. Number five, ask ourselves this. What good is it going to do us to be critical of each other? What's the benefit? It's nothing. It's a big zero. Or as my Spanish teacher would say, it's a big huevo de ganso, which I think is a goose egg, but anyway. <laughs> so ask ourselves, what good is it going to do us to criticize our brothers and our sisters? Does it make it, us feel better about ourselves? Why do we do it? Is it to compare ourselves to each other? And we also mentioned that that was not wise. But this is written in James 5 and 9. Don't grumble against one another. Brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. It's a reminder. We're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. Shake off the beast. Number six, and we're almost closing here. Cultivate a view of life that is more expansive. Get a bigger picture of it. Realize what you're focused on in your brother or your sister is just so tiny. That in the grand scheme of things, now let me stop there. Pray for them. If you truly feel like there's an area of weakness and opportunity for your brother and sister, pray for them. Our hypocritical and hypocritical bent or slant is brought on when we've made our world so small. Look for the glories that are around you. Psalm 96, 11 and 12. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. When you get that mindset and you start looking upon your father and his creation, you're going to forget the small, tiny things that have been bothering you about your brother and your sister. But you're going to get your mind on him, and he's going to do some things for you in that. And he's going to allow you to be able to minister to your brother and sister, not criticize them. Shake off the beast. Number seven, this is a little bit like number three with Thanksgiving. Fill your heart and mouth with praise. Hallelujah. On everything. Psalm 104, 31 to 33. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. 
He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God for how long? As long as I live, as long as he puts breath in my lungs, as long as he lets my heart beat, I will sing his praises, I will glorify his name, and I will lift up and edify my brother and sister in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Shake off the beast. Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually, it shall continually Somebody say continually. It shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And number eight is having his mindset, the mind of Christ. What we have going between our brains up here. And this is a great scripture to end the service with because Paul starts it off with the word finally. <laughs> so Paul said this in Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Let our mind go here. Let our mind be exalting the good things of God. Anytime you ever have a thought, a negative thought about somebody, it could be a family member, friend, brother, or sister, try thinking this instead. What is it about them that's strong? What is it about them that edifies me? What is it about them that lifts me up? There may be no answer for that, but hopefully it is. It'll challenge your mind. It'll challenge the way you think. Let's all stand together. The praise and worship team is going to close in a song. And let's just bow our heads in a moment of prayer as they begin. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the word of God today that's gone forth. I pray, God, that it has accomplished what you set it forth to do. This is a great people, God. These are the sheep of your pasture. And we are blessed to be united together in your house. For we are glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. Have your way with your people today, God, as they... Leave this place. Let them be encouraged, God, to shake off the beast when it latches on, to recognize his sneakiness, his hiding place. He will try to make himself comfortable in the areas where we're comfortable and sneak up on us. Give us your mind, Father. Help us to see like you see, feel like you feel. Help us to be a people that edifies one another, that bears fruit to the strengthening of our brothers and sisters. Pray this prayer in Jesus' name. This altar is open. If you want to come, they're going to play for a few minutes. You can just come and worship. If you've got something you want to take before the Lord, this is the place to do it. Don't be shy. Come, if you will, if he's called you to come. If you don't know the Lord and he's pulling on your heart today, if you've been absent from him, maybe you've had a time in your childhood where you used to seek the Lord, and that has dissipated and has been absent in your life for a long time, you can come. Seek him at this altar. Many people find the Lord at an altar. Don't be worried about people seeing you come up front. They just got a message about being critical. So hopefully they won't judge. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Lord, help us all. Thank you, Jesus, for my sister. Oh, he forgives you, sister. We. That's an honest soul. We all bear that. Amen. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. You're forgiven, Sister D. He forgives you. Praise God. Why don't we come? Let's let's come. I feel the Lord saying, come. I feel the Lord saying, come to the front. As many as can, please. Let's unite together. Hallelujah. Let's shake off the beast right here and right now. Let's do this. Let's do this together in the name of Jesus. Father, bless your people as they come, Lord God, to this altar to kneel before you. Repent if necessary, O God, to seek your face, God, your will for their lives, to help them, Lord, and strengthen them today. Bless those that are here, O God, and bless those that remain, and bless those that are watching that have been ministered to, Lord, by your Holy Spirit through the waves. As people have come, if they're praying, if you have a particular need, if you need a touch in your body of healing, come and we'll anoint you with oil. I'm going to shut the microphone off here. If you must leave, you're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great day and go in peace.
to the name of Jesus. We're bringing it all to the name of Jesus. Everything that you carry, we're bringing it to the name of Jesus. This is your moment to come to the name of Jesus. This is your time to focus on the name of Jesus. This is your time to come forward in the name of Jesus. To the name who is above all names, we worship Jesus. To those things that are holding on to, we give them up in the name of Jesus. To the anger, to the jealousy, to the frustration, we call on the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name, we lift up your name, we lift up your name, Jesus.
Have a great week. Um, go in peace.